Today we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ our Lord. Today is Christmas Day, the day on which we celebrate the gift to us of the birth of Jesus. We recall the hope we have in Christ. Today we light again the candles of hope, peace, love, joy, and the Christ. The first candle. We speak of hope because God keeps his promises to us. The second candle. We work for peace because Jesus is the Prince of Peace and he calls his children to work for peace in his name. The third candle. We share joy because the Holy Spirit fills our hearts and minds with the presence of God. The fourth candle. We show love because Jesus gave everything for us and led us to know the forgiveness of God. And the last candle. We light our last candle to remember the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which we celebrate this Christmas Day. Over us all, and 
Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. You are here this morning. You are exactly where you are supposed to be this morning. Let us pray. Oh, Lord our God, the birth of your son, Jesus, has brought us joy. Please accept our humble prayer at this time of the year. We thank you once again for the gift of your son. And we ask that you would help us to follow his example throughout the coming year. We also pray for all those who are grieving at this time. We know that Christmas can be a difficult time for those who have lost loved ones. Please give them the strength to get through this difficult time. And please comfort them in their time of sorrow. We pray for all those who are suffering, both physically and emotionally. We ask that you would give them the healing they need and the peace that surpasses all understanding. We also pray for those who are far from home at this time. We ask that you would keep them safe and protected and that they would feel your love and presence in their lives. We pray for all those who are struggling financially at this time. We ask that you would bless them with your abundance and that they would have the strength to face whatever challenges come their way. Most of all, we pray for peace. We pray that we would live in a world filled with love and understanding where no one feels alone or abandoned. In Jesus' name, we pray all these things and all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Our hymn of preparation at this time is Angels We Have Heard All Time. If you are able, please stand.
Heavenly Father, today is about giving. And so as we give to this ministry, we give because of the gift that you gave us, Jesus the Christ. And so with these gifts, and by these gifts, may others come to know Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on up, kids. How's everybody doing? Having a good day so far? Great day so far? Good. That's what I want to hear. And so today I want to talk about good news. Now, if you have good news, how would you let someone know? Tell them. What's that? Tell someone. Tell them. Yeah, you can tell them. Is there another way that we could put out good news? Send them a letter. That would take a little while. An email would be quicker, but <laughs> a letter's okay. Also, uh, we could put it on Facebook. You know, there's lots of ways that we could send out good news, pick up the phone. Um, last night, uh, Jack and Wendy called, and Jack had really good news. He got a T-Rex from his other grandmother. <laughs> and he was so excited. I'm not quite sure what Gwenny got, because he kept pushing her out of the way. <laughs> he wanted me to know that he got a T-Rex, because he loves dinosaurs. So that's another way when you FaceTime someone. So there are lots of ways. Um, also, you can put it put an ad in the newspaper, right? There's so many different ways that we could spread good news. There's another way. And these were put on horses, the jingle bells. And so when the horses would come, if people were getting company, this is not now, this was way back when, when people visited each other with horses, people would hear the jingle bells, and then they would know that somebody was coming to visit them. So that was good news usually, wasn't it? That they were coming. But if we look way back when Jesus was born, how did people find out about that? How did Mary find out? An angel. How did the shepherds find out? An angel. How did Joseph find out? An angel. How did the Magi find out? Um, the star. Well, but the reason this, they knew about the star was because the prophets of old told them, and so as they looked to God's word, and the star appeared, then they knew the good news. So I'm going to give each of you a bell. Do you want a red one or a white one? A white one, what about you? White. White. There you go. Red, white, white, white. White. Okay. I'll take a red one then. And so with this, every time you look at this, I want you to keep this. How fine do you look pretty good? How's yours look? Okay. Good, good news. Every time you look at this, I want you to remember the good news we have today. I almost wore my sweatshirt today. I got a new sweatshirt. I debated whether wear, whether not to wear it, and I didn't. It had a pit major scene on it, and it said, best day ever. That's today, isn't it? As we celebrate baby Jesus. So when you look at this, remember the good news. I mean, it's nice that we're getting presents today. It's nice that we're being with family and having a meal. All that stuff's nice, but that's not the good news. The good news is Jesus. For under us today, in the city of David is born a Savior, Jesus the Christ. So can you ring your bell and stand up, turn face all of those people, and say, Jesus is born. Jesus is born. Thank you. Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can celebrate this special day. The day that Jesus was born, that's the gift. It's not all the other stuff. Jesus is the gift, and we thank you. Amen. Now, I'm going to give you a gift. It's not the gift, 
because Jesus is the gift, but I want to give you some Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Okay, you can go back to your seats. Thank you. Today's scripture for the message is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 36, and chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we read your word, your word never fails. Reveal the message that you have for us this day. Reveal the good news, what's truly good news. We can come up with many things, but the good news of Christmas is singular. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus came to save us. Jesus came as a baby. And so reveal your message because of that great gift that we've received this day. Amen. Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 26. Let us listen to the words of the Lord. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at the words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with your God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of God, Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. And then in chapter 2, beginning with verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will follow you will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off <coughs> and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard were amazed 
and what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is God's holy word. Speak to God. Now, Christmas time was a wonderful time for Sammy. He loved Christmas. And in spite of his handicap, he was able to do things that most other kids were able to do. You see, Sammy was just a little bit slow, but he was able to ride his bicycle. He played ball. He went fishing. He did all the stuff other kids <clears throat> did. Now, in spite of the fact that he was two years behind where he should be in school, he wasn't picked on, at least not very much. Most of the kids were fairly nice to him. Uh, however, every once in a while, he would be called Stupid Sammy. But it didn't really affect him. Either he didn't hear or he chose not to listen. But it was finally Christmas Eve. And as I said before, he loved Christmas. He just loved it. And they were getting ready for the Christmas Eve service. And they were going early because his mom had a special and she wanted to practice which was just fine with Sam because the tradition at that church is you made it through the service, they had packages, gifts under the tree for all the children. Now, even though Sammy was a little bit old, they went along with it because he was slow Sammy. So they gave him a gift also. So when they got to church and mom got ready to practice, Sammy ran up to the Christmas tree and he started going through all the packages, looking for one that had his name on it. And he went through, finally, the biggest package of all, Sammy, S-A-M-M-Y. It was there, he had the biggest package of all. He was so excited that he could hardly make it through the service. I mean, after all, it's hard to make it through a service that lasts three days. <laughs> or at least that's what it seemed like to Sammy. He did enjoy his mother's special though, but finally the service had ended and the pastor told the children to all come forward and Sammy went rushing up. The pastor looked at the names. Susie, he gave Susie her gift. Bobby gave Bobby his gift and one by one gave all the children. And finally he saw, well, that's a big package. I wonder whose package that is. Sammy said, it's mine, that's my package. And the pastor looked, sure enough, it's your package. And so Sammy was so excited to open it, began to gently tear the paper, cut all the paper off, and he couldn't wait just to lift the lid. What could be in there? A bicycle? A television? What else could be there? He was so excited. Finally got it off, got the bow off, he lifted the lid, he looked inside. You know what was in there? Nothing. The box was empty. There was nothing in the box. Tears streamed down Sammy's face. Somebody had played a trick on stupid Sammy. Every day, all around the world, the same trick is being played. All the names, they might be different, and the situation might be a little different as well, but the results were the same. Folks, the world promises us great things, doesn't it? Happiness, wealth, pleasure, lasting relationships, fame, success, power. And then the world wraps it all up in a great big box with a big beautiful bow on top. Pretty paper. Gives you a beautiful package. And then you unwrap that big beautiful box. You open it up. You get excited. And you look inside. You open it with great expectations. And just like Sammy, all you find is an empty box. No hope. 
hope, no joy, no happiness, just tears and heartbreak. That's the kind of presence that the world gives. Today, we celebrate Christmas. We celebrate the greatest gift ever given, the only gift you will ever need, a gift so special, so wonderful, God's very own son, the gift of Jesus. Jesus, what a special gift. And so today, I want to look at that gift that we've been given from God himself and see just what's so special about this gift. If we look at Luke chapter 1, verses 31, 32, and 35, they say you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Jesus is no ordinary present. I mean, he's not even extraordinary. The gift of Jesus is supernatural. The gift of Jesus is one of a kind. It's a unique gift that's never been given before or since. You know, when you're expecting a baby, you take a lot of time, and we talked about this a few weeks ago, or maybe last week, about getting just the right name. Sometimes we name the baby after a loved one. Or we name the baby with a name that has a special meaning, such as Diana, the goddess of love. <laughs> Jesus was given a special name. The name means savior. Jesus came to save the world. But it's more personal than that, isn't it? He came to save you and he came to save me. Scripture says Jesus was called the Son of the Most High. Jesus was no ordinary gift. It's a special gift. If we look at Luke chapter 1, verse 33, it says, He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. The gift of Jesus, it came with a guarantee, didn't it? Now, if we go shopping or if we buy a car, the first thing they want to know is do you want an extended warranty? <laughs> and it's going to cost you something, isn't it? And then they always have like a limited warranty on all, most things. And they're limited to what would never happen or could never happen. Or you get a lifetime warranty. And so 10 years after having the product, it breaks down. <laughs> so you find out in order to get reimbursed or to get a new, new item, you have to have the original receipt, UPC symbol. And if by chance you happen to have both of those after 10 years, it's amazing, first of all, but then you find out that the company went out of business. And then you get the bumper to bumper warranty. But Ford wasn't the first to come up with that. As God came up with that with Jesus, he was the first to offer the lifetime, not limited warranty, but full warranty, bumper to bumper. Jesus' warranty, warranty, and here it is. It never ends, it never expires, it never ever runs out. See, it comes with a guarantee. And a guarantee is only as, as good as who it comes from. This guarantee has come from God himself. In Luke chapter 1, verse 35, it says, So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Jesus is God's only Son. Jesus is special. Jesus is one of a kind. Jesus is holy, perfect, sinless. The only one that had the power to save the sins of the world. The only one that had the power to forgive sins. Now Steve Hugo told this story about growing up. He said he lived next to Old Man Jones. 
and he said he played tricks, some awful tricks on old man Jones all the time while he was growing up. He remembers on April 1st, he would always get a brown bag and fill it with dog poop, <laughs> set it on fire on old man Jones's porch. But old man Jones was too smart to come out and stomp on it. But he still had a terrible, terrible mess to clean up, didn't he? And old man Jones would look at Steve because he knew who did it. And without anger in his voice, he'd say, someday you'll be sorry. And in the winter time, when we, he'd get a heavy snow, Steve would go out and he'd shovel out his driveway. And where would he shovel it to? Right to the driveway next to him, in old man Jones's driveway. And one year, a big snowstorm was supposed to come, and there was sitting was a snowblower. Had a tag on it to Steve, I think you can use this. So what did he do with it? He made extra wide, even went in the yard some, so he could even blow more snow over to old man Jones's house. And old man, old man Jones, he just looked and he said, without anger in his voice, someday you'll be sorry. Over the years, Steve keyed his car. He used a BB gun, and he found out that if he pumped it up exactly 10 times, it would go through the window. And in old man Jones's house, all the windows had been broken. The siding, which was aluminum, was all dented up from the BB gun. And old man Jones would go, without anger in his voice, someday, You'll be sorry. But Steve didn't stop there. He shot at the bird feeders. And he even shot a lot of sparrows. And he, looking back, remembered how gently old man Jones would come out and gather that little dead bird up and go bury it with such compassion. He said, someday, with no anger in his voice, someday you'll be sorry. The plastic manger at Christmas time, it had holes all through it. Now, at Christmas time also, Steve's mom was an alcoholic, so she usually lay drunk Christmas Eve. But every Christmas morning, there were packages there. Now, his mom didn't talk to his grand, her dad, which would be Steve's grandfather, but. Uh, Steve was sure that's where the packages were coming from. And he wanted so much to meet his grandfather, at least just get to see what he looked like. So he decided to get up very early Christmas morning and wait. And he sat there on the steps until finally he heard someone coming up onto the porch. And he went over and slowly opened the door and peeked out. But all he could see were packages that all had his name on, someone carrying them. And all of a sudden, the man set down the packages and stood up. And there was old man Jones. And Steve said old man Jones was right. He was sorry. He was sorry. Let's look at verses, or verse 10 in chapter 2. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. The gift of Jesus is so special. And it comes with a guarantee. It's one of a kind, and it's for everyone. Jesus is saying to us this day, accept the gift of salvation that I offer you. And with no anger in his voice whatsoever, he's saying, I accept the gift, or someday you'll be sorry. Jesus didn't come to earth as a man so that we could have another holiday, so that everybody but FedEx could have today off. <laughs> it's true. He didn't come so that the retail stores would make lots and lots of money. He came so that someday we will be able to stand before God and not have to say we are sorry. <coughs> this is God's gift on that first Christmas. And that's the gift that he still has for us this day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you just isn't enough. 
There are no words to express what this gift means, how great this gift is. We're so thankful this day that we're here together as a family, the family that you've given us, by the way, celebrating and praising the name of Jesus, our Savior. Heavenly Father, touch each heart this day. Touch them so that they accept Jesus as their Savior, the only hope that we have, the only guarantee we have, the most special gift anyone can ever receive so that they won't have to say I'm sorry someday. <clears throat> Today's the day. The day that we celebrate Jesus coming to earth to save us. That's the gift we celebrate. And we give you all the glory, Amen. all the honor, and all the praise for this wonderful gift. In your holy name, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our closing hymn this day is Go Tell It on the Mountains. So if you are able, please stand. Enjoy the gifts that you receive, but remember, that's not what today is all about. Today is about the gift, the gift of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. <clears throat>